So this tutorial is about the circle paint and kind of like the change color. Uh, well, you get into it with the filters effects and you go into circle paint and then it uh, automatically does a paint for you. Like the change color tutorial, you know, I mentioned that at first it might seem like it only has one thing that it can offer you, you know, one effect. And in the circle paint, it might be more true than the change color, but there's a lot you can do with it depending on the options that you choose. For, for example, when it comes in, it, it does uh, a default for you where it sets a, a, a canvas texture and you can select different textures, like there's a fine canvas versus a canvas, depending on what you want. And then you can do uh, kind of an older paper look, which looks very nice. And you can make it look like it's on paint. And then also there's a paper, uh, which looks like it's more on a kind of a cotton paper and then there's a birch which I think looks kind of nice too because it looks like it's kind of painted on, on wood and so going or, or you can just not do a texture I think it looks better with the texture typically and um, so let's put it back to canvas and then what you can do is you can also select kind of a smooth mode where it, it smooths it out and makes it look uh, smoother and then you can it's more amenable to drawing edges and that sort of thing So really I've just done defaults here. So if I press accept and then uh, look at it uh, full screen, for example, let me go back over to the main menu here. And then if I look at it uh, full screen, it's not really a bad effect. Or if I put a, a border on it, for example, it looks pretty interesting. And so now if I go back into the, uh, let's get back to the original, and then I go back into the, uh, the circle paint then I can explore it a little bit more. For example, if I want to draw edges, I think depending on what you want to do with the edges, you can uh, you can open up the edge window and you can change how the edges are drawn to have the edges look more coarse, for example, to make it look more cartoonish or to make it more like a drawing, like uh, maybe a hand drawing or something. You can um, change the way that uh, the coarseness of, of the edges or you can even ex um, XOR the edges, which makes them uh, lighter. And so if I turn the edges off, what I can do too is I can change the decimation, which makes it look really more like someone took a big thick brush and painted over it, especially if I do the smooth setting and set the de decimation out. So you can see I can do lots of things and I can draw the edges again. Maybe with that particular setting, I want to do more coarse edges to make it look, look a little more, more interesting. And so you can see I actually have a different effect than I had before. What I really like is when you do these high decimation settings, you, you get the lines, but then you also have kind of areas that look like they're they're very coarsely done, like someone just took a paintbrush and really wasn't uh, uh, really thinking about the edges. I, I, always, I always like this effect where you get the edges, but then you don't exactly have the color inside the edges. I think it looks pretty nice sometimes to, to do that. So at first, the uh, oil paint, for example, might look like a more intrinsically interesting uh, function, and it probably is in, in many ways. But the circle paint, it, by the way, it's named circle paint because it just really paints with circles, big circles, small circles, depending on how it looks at the image. But the one, one of the many things that you get with the circle paint that I'm not really seeing with the oil paint or, or some of the other functions is you really get these, like this cloud line here, you really get this sense of like brush strokes which looks really nice. I mean, the oil paint can give you a sense of brush strokes too, but this gives you these kind of wide sort of brush strokes, which I think look really nice. Um, you know, and without the dry edges, it doesn't really make that much sense as an image, but then when you put the edges in there, all of a sudden it just really, really makes it uh, stand out. And so, so that's the, the circle paint, where if you explore it a little bit, you can do a lot more with it. For example, I can press the more, and then I can change the, the smoothness of the brush strokes, and then I can just play. I don't, I, I don't think it's really important to explain all of the um, options because they're just really, they, they do different things, and if they look better, they look better. Uh, for example, you can see that I have this underpainting thing, and what it'll do is it, it's really more for these high decimation values where, let's take the brush, uh, the edges off for a second, that it'll, it'll change the way the, the, um, the edges appear in the, uh, in the image. So if I have this low value set, you'll start to see these edges appear, which can look pretty, it can, 
make an image look fake, but it can also make an image look interesting depending on what you're doing. Like on this particular one, it makes it look pretty interesting and it almost doesn't get to the point where you don't need the edges anymore, the draw edges, to show the definition of the actual painting. And so you can see that looks, that looks very interesting right there. So now let me ex briefly explain the rest of the buttons and, and what they do. With the brush size, for example, what I can do is I can just set that to whatever and you can see it just changes things. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, depending on, on what your settings are. And so that's just really dependent on the image. And you can see that as I get closer to the decimation being zero and the brush size being zero, it starts to look like the original. It still looks as a painting quality, but it still looks like the original picture. And with the sharpness, what that does is you can see when it's zero, it ha it's uh, not as defined. And when you bring it out, it can, uh, it can have different effects depending on, on what you're doing. It's set at a default level, but when you don't texturize, uh, you can see that it, it, it can look quite different. Or depending on if you have a different texture, like uh, for example, paper texture, when you have a higher sharpness, it can, it can help bring out the paper texture and define the edges a little bit more. Regenerate, what that does is if you see something you don't like, like an edge it's catching or just some weirdness in there that you don't like, you can press regenerate and what it will do is it'll just uh, use the same settings but then use a different random generation to change it just a little bit. So now what I want to show you is how you can combine effects. So let me get to the, uh, the default value and what I'll do is I'll even do maybe even a little, little bit of a higher decimation and because um, uh, I want it to really, in fact, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and texturize it with the canvas texture, for example. And then what I'll do is I'll accept that. And in a way, I'm really finding out a lot about my own program lately as I do the tutorials and, and I uh, experiment with different things. And what I found recently was that what you can do is you can use the blend and do image. I mean, this is really useful in mixing a lot of uh, effects, but I found it useful even, even with the circle paint and the oil paint, where what I can do is I can select overlay. You can do it with also with, uh, I'm going to explain the blending in a, in a different tutorial, but you can use a screen, for example, and what you can see is it, is it mixes the original image with the painting that you just did. And you can see already that it gives us a very interesting painting quality in there. I'm going to press accept. You can see it's added a lot of contrast, but this is one of the advantages of 16-bit per channel is that I can back off on this and not really lose a, a lot of or really any quality to it. Whereas if it was an 8-bit editor, it, I don't think you'd really be able to do that very easily. And so what I can do is you can see I can I can play with it a little bit. And, um, and so you can see that if I go back to the actual circle paint and then I compare it to the original, of course, it's a different quality, but then if I compare it to what I just did with the mixture, you can see it's very different. And I think it, it has a more defined quality to it, but also if you look into the mountain area and, and uh, down in here in, in the uh, uh, marsh area, that it really has I think even more of a painting quality than the, uh, than the circle paint. It's, it's really interesting actually. And then what I can do is I can go ahead and I can use the uh, Dodge and Burn, for example, to highlight uh, certain areas to make it even more interesting. I think it has even more of a painting-like quality uh, by, by doing that. And then maybe what I want to do is darken the sky a little bit um, in, in this area. and. Uh, and so you can see that's a really quite an interesting effect. And uh, you know, when I look at a full screen, it really, really does have a nice painting quality to it. And uh, that's the circle paint, you know. And like I said before, if you just do the defaults, and you know, it may look like it just does one thing, but there's really a whole lot of scope to it. And then, as you can see, you can mix it with other things and to have uh, use it to do different effects by using different blending modes and that sort of thing.